As you watch this teaching, I want to ask you to please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and today, my friends, I'm so glad you're with me because I'm starting a brand new series called How to Heal the Sick. Jesus has commanded us to lay hands on the sick, and he promised that if we would do so, they would recover. But maybe you've tried to pray for the sick, and you've had disappointing results. Why have you had disappointing results. Well, this week, you're going to get a brand new revelation about what you need to be doing to heal the sick. And we're going to begin by looking at the healing ministry of Jesus. But I want you to order the entire series, which is called How to Heal the Sick. It's five parts. It comes in multiple formats, and it comes with a tremendous study guide filled with all the Greek words, which we're going to be exegeting in the program this week. My friends, you really need to get this. This would be great for you to use in a Bible study, or if you're discipling somebody, or just to consume yourself. My friends, you're anointed to heal the sick. You need to know how Jesus did it, and you need to follow in his pattern. And that's what this wonderful brand new series is all about. And we're also offering you two books. One is called Bodily Healing and the Atonement. This is a book which really dramatically affected me. It proved to me beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus really took sickness and disease on his body when he died on the cross for you and for me. We're redeemed from sickness and disease, and this book will prove it to you. And we're also offering you a book which really personally blessed me by Pastor Bob Yandian, which is called The Grace of Healing. In fact, it blessed me so much that I wrote the foreword for this book. I laughed out loud when I read this book because it is so liberating when it comes to the subject of divine healing. But you can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call right now. And please, when you reach out to us, always let us know how to pray for you because we're people of prayer. We really believe in prayer. We're praying all day. I've already prayed for you today. I'll pray for you before I go to bed tonight. Our team is praying for you and we're waiting for the phone to ring or for your email to show up in our inbox. And the moment we know concretely what are your needs, then we will specifically pray and release our faith and Jesus will really do something for you. Dear friend, he's got a miracle with your name on it waiting for you and we'll pray with you and you will receive what you need. Amen. And hey, also remember that when you become a partner with our ministry, we send you two books as our way of saying, welcome to our partner family. Our partners are so precious to us. That's not just a cliche that we use. When people join hands with us financially to take this teaching to people around the world, they really become partners in what we are doing. And our partners are really a priority to us. And the moment you become a partner, we're going to send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone, which is dedicated to our partners, and Denise's wonderful book called The Gift of Forgiveness. But I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. My friend, I want you to reach for your Bible and open your Bible to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. And today we're going to be looking at the types of sicknesses and diseases that Jesus healed. But as you open your Bible, I want you to say this out loud with me right now. Are you ready? Here we go. Today, I am going to get something brand new from the Word of God. Say it again. Say it like you believe it. Today, I'm going to get something brand new from the Word of God. Amen. Hey, but before we begin, I want to tell you how this series first came about. 
Many years ago, when Denise and I first began our teaching, traveling ministry, that was the year 1985. Wow, that was a long time ago. Denise and I were traveling in our little car to churches all over the United States with our sons traveling with us and luggage piled on top of the car. And we would pull into a city and begin to minister in a church. And we always laid hands on the sick. And sometimes we saw great results and sometimes we had very disappointing results. And I began to wonder why are some healed and some are not. And I decided that I would go to the four gospels and begin to study every instance of healing and miracles that are recorded in the gospels. And as I began to go page by page through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I began to find treasures that no one had ever taught me and I had never heard before. And that is how this series was birthed. And what we learned in those early years has impacted us as we have prayed for the sick over all these many years. But open your Bible and let's go to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, which is going to be our foundation verse for this series. It says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you have to settle it in your mind that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he healed then, he's healing now, and he's going to heal tomorrow. He's not a different Jesus today than he was back then. He's going to be the same Jesus tomorrow. He is a healing Jesus. He is still in the healing business. And in fact, Jesus healed so many people during the course of his ministry that when John was writing his gospel, the very last verse of John says... John 21, verse 25 says, And there were also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written down, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that could be written. And then he ends with, Amen. Well, let me give you a little piece of information. If you put together all the days of Jesus' life, which are recorded in the four Gospels, including His birth, all the way to His resurrection, and all the way to His ascension. If you chronologically put them all together, how many days of Jesus' life do you think we have a record of in the four Gospels? Now, somebody might say, uh, three and a half years. No, 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 that's not what I'm asking you. Of those three and a half years, how many days in those three and a half years are actually documented? And scholars have come up with a number that we probably have a record of somewhere between 23 and 52 days of Jesus' life. That's all that we have in the Gospels, little snapshots of what he did in those days. Well, if it took four Gospels to record what he did just in those days, then imagine how much text it would take if you recorded everything that he did in those three and a half years of ministry. And that's why John said, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that could be written. And when you read this in Greek, I suppose means I suppose of course, it's not possible, but if it were possible, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written, which means, my friends, if you were with Jesus, there was always something to see. There was always something to hear. His power was in manifestation. And today, I want us to begin seeing the types of sicknesses and diseases that Jesus healed. And we're going to begin in the gospel of Matthew. So open your Bible to the book of Matthew. And today we're going to begin in chapter 4 in verse 23. And I want to move very slowly through these verses because these verses are just jam-packed. Let's go there. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And then it says, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Okay, stop. I need to say something very important. In the four Gospels, there are two primary words used to describe the healing ministry of Jesus. You have a piece of paper. I want you to write this down. Look at it on the screen. Take a note of this. Two primary words used to describe the healing ministry of Jesus. One is the Greek word eaomai. Eaomai. And the word eaomai means to cure, to be doctored, and it describes a healing power that progressively, did you hear that? 
progressively reverses a condition. Hence, it is a progressive, restorative kind of healing power. It's not instantaneous. It's just as good as any kind of healing power, but it is a healing power which works over a period of time. It progressively reverses a condition. That is one word which is used to describe the healing ministry of Jesus. But then there's a second, and the second word is the word most often used in the Gospels to describe the healing ministry of Jesus. It's also translated as the word healing, but it is the Greek word therapeo. Do you hear a word in that? It's where we get the word therapy, and it depicts a healing touch that requires a corresponding action. In other words, this isn't just the praying person doing all the praying by himself. The person being prayed for has to respond. He has to have some kind of corresponding action. And that is why it is where we get the word for therapy. A therapist doesn't do the job by himself. The person he's working with has to cooperate. Well, that is from the Greek word therapeo, and that is the primary word used to describe the healing ministry of Jesus. And we see that in this verse. But let's look at it again. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing. And there we have this word, therapeo, where we get the word therapy. Jesus was praying for people. He was ministering to people, but he wasn't doing all the action by himself. Jesus was taking time with every single person. The use of this word healing, the Greek word therapeo, means he was asking them to do something after he touched them or after he prayed for them. This means Jesus took a lot of time when he was ministering to people. And one reason we don't see more results is because we're in a hurry to get from one person to another person and another person. But Jesus did not do that. He stopped and he said to the person with a withered hand, all right, now you need to do something. Stretch forth your hand. Well, that would have been very difficult for a person with a withered hand. But Jesus required him to do something. He had to correspond. He had to work with Jesus Jesus released the power, but when the person responded with the corresponding action, that is when the healing was manifested. And now we find that word used in this verse. Jesus was therapying. That's really a little translation. He was releasing the power and stopping to say to people, okay, if you couldn't use your hand, use your hand. If you couldn't raise your arm, raise your arm. He was requiring them to do something. And the result was he was healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. But notice it says sickness and disease. Well, what's the difference between sickness and disease? Apparently, these are not the same thing, and they're not. For example, the word sickness is the Greek word nosos, spelled N-O-S-O-S. -S. This word nosos depicts a terminal condition for which there is no natural cure. It was a sickness that was a result of evil spirits, and again, a condition for which there was no known cure. And this word nosos was always associated with spirit inflicted sicknesses and diseases. That's the word sickness in verse 23. But notice it also says, he was healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. This word disease in Greek is very different from the word sickness. The word sickness is this word nosos, which we've already seen, but the word disease is the word malakion, M-A-L-A-K-I-A-N, which depicts a crippling or a debilitating disease. This would be a disease that would affect your muscles or your nerves. You could live, but you couldn't walk, you couldn't function because somehow you were affected malakion. This was a crippling or a debilitating kind of disease. And now we find in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, that Jesus healed both categories of these sicknesses. Then let's go to verse 24, Matthew 4, 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those that were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic. What in the world does that mean? And those that had the palsy, and he healed them. But notice that the very first of verse 24, Matthew says, and his fame went throughout all of Syria. Do you know what the word fame means? 
is the Greek word akoe, which is the Greek word for the human ear. And it really depicts ears filled with information. People's ears were buzzing with stories and rumors about the healing ministry of Jesus. Everyone was talking about it. And they brought unto him all sick people. The word brought, the Greek word pros fero. The word pros means toward. The word fero means to carry, like to physically carry a piece of furniture or to carry something heavy. And here we find invalids who were so sick they could not physically walk to the place where Jesus was ministering. So their family and their friends said, hey, you're going to go see Jesus. They picked them up and prospero, they literally physically carried them to Jesus. Look how much they loved their friends and their family. They physically carried them unto him, all sick people. And here the word sick is even a different word, the Greek word kakos. The word kakos means bad. It describes something that's really foul. And usually this word kakos, when used in connection with sickness, is associated with demonic activity. And it says sick people that were taken with divers diseases. I like this word divers because in Greek it is the word poikilos, which means assorted diseases. You could translate it divers diseases, various diseases. And interestingly, it is the same word used in the Old Testament Greek Septuagint to describe Joseph's coat of many colors. So these were many colors of diseases, which means Jesus healed everything. It didn't matter what it was, what assortment it was, or how divers it was. Jesus healed it all, and he's still healing it today because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the word diseases is again this Greek word nosos, and you're going to find that this word nosos appears again and again and again and again. And that is important because this was a terminal case for which there was no natural cure. Jesus could even heal the worst, the most terminal of cases, and he did and he does. And then it says in torments. But when you read this in the Greek text, it really adds another word, which is not translated in the King James Version. The Greek actually says oppressing torments, oppressing torments. It depicts those that were oppressed, those who were emotionally and mentally struggling with depression. And then it goes on to say, and those that were possessed with devils, possessed with devils does not mean they were demon possessed, but that they were demonized in some way in their life. You don't have to be fully demon possessed to be demonized. They were ill affected in their minds, Somehow demons had affected their health. These were demonized individuals, and Jesus healed them. And those that were lunatic. Okay, now we come to the word lunatic. What does the word lunatic mean? The word lunatic is a very interesting word, which means moonstruck. If you're going to translate this literally, it would be, and them which were moonstruck, and it depicts an event that happened during the full moon and likely describes a sickness that resulted from those who were dabbling in the occult. And because they opened a door to a dark realm, demon spirits begin to physically and mentally and emotionally affect them. And then the Bible says, and those that had the palsy, the word palsy in Greek is paralutikos. It really is those that are paralyzed. And what did Jesus do? He healed them. He healed them. And guess what? The word healed is again, is the Greek word therapeo. This is so important when it comes to healing the sick. It literally means Jesus therapied them. Jesus didn't just fly through a prayer line one reason he had such results is because he stopped and he worked with every single person. Again, if a person had a withered arm, he said, okay, now let's do something. Let's release that power. Stretch forth your hand. If they were laying on a bed, he said, okay, do your best to pick up that bed. You've got to do something. If you couldn't use that leg, try to use that leg. If you couldn't raise your arm, raise your arm. He required some kind of corresponding action. Yes, he did the praying. He did the speaking. Jesus released the anointing, but the healing was manifested when the person corresponded with some kind of accompanying action. It's really the word therapy. And if you want to see more people healed, then you need to do more than just lay your hands on them. You need to stop and say, okay, now let's do what you previously couldn't do. 
Shut your eye, reopen your eye, let's see how you see. Cover your ear. Now, let's see how you can hear out of that other ear. Use that hand, raise that arm, do something. Require them to cooperate with you. That is the Greek word therapeo, which is primarily used to describe the healing ministry of Jesus. Jesus really took time with people. He worked with them until the healing came into manifestation. And I really believe and I've learned that if you will take more time with people as you pray for them, you will have greater results. You've got to help people. And in fact, Jesus taught his disciples to do the same. And they worked with people as they prayed for them and told them to do things in response. And that's when the healing power really took root and manifested. Now today we're just getting started, but I think you see from this scripture alone, Jesus healed so many kinds of sicknesses and diseases, divers. And again, the word divers, the Greek word poikilos, assorted, various, uh, so many different kinds, multicolored sicknesses and diseases. And in fact, there was nothing that he did not heal and nothing that he cannot heal. And according to Hebrews 13, verse eight, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it then, he's doing it now. And my friends, if you need healing in your body right now, we'll pray for you. Call us, send us an email, we'll release our faith, and this same healing Jesus will go to work for you, and you can pray for others as well. But I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. Someone asked the question, my husband and I go to church, but sometimes my husband smokes and drinks. What should I do? Well, it's amazing how we identify certain sins and not others. For example, some people smoke, some people may drink, and none of that is good and all of it is wrong, but other people overeat or they gossip. Those are sins as well. And it doesn't matter what is the category of sin, all of us need to draw near to the Lord we need to read the Word, we need to deal with our flesh, and you can only do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I encourage you today to pray for your husband, but don't just pray for him, pray for yourself, because there's areas of your life that need correction as well. So let's all go to the Lord, let's come to the altar, lay ourselves on that altar every day as we're commanded in Romans chapter 12, verse one, and surrender ourselves to be living sacrifices. And as we do that, God's spirit will fill us and we'll begin to drop these things that are displeasing to the Lord. Have you desired to lay your hands on the sick and see them be healed? Have you tried to do it, but felt disappointed with the results? If that describes you, then we have good news. Many years ago, Rick and Denise Renner felt the same way. So Rick dove into the gospel to discover how Jesus healed the sick. From that time on, the Renners have seen multitudes of people healed. And now Rick is sharing what they learned in this valuable series, How to Heal the Sick. In this five-part series, you'll learn the types of sicknesses Jesus healed, the methods Jesus used to heal the sick, the use of therapy in the healing ministry of Jesus. Healing belongs to anyone who believes. Healing is in your hands. If you're ready to heal the sick like Jesus did, as he commands us to do, then you need this series. Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $11. We're also offering you the books, Bodily Healing and the Atonement by Dr. T.J. McCrossan and The Grace of Healing by Bob Yandian. Both books are powerful tools to set you on a strong foundation for seeing healing in your life and in the lives of others. You can order Bodily Healing and the Atonement for only $10 and the Grace of Healing for only $13. Don't miss this special offer, the five-part series, How to Heal the Sick, and the books, Bodily Healing and the Atonement and the Grace of Healing. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and today I'm happy to be coming to you from the Tulsa headquarters of our ministry. And this is the room where they do production. And just recently they expanded this room because we're sending resources to the ends of the earth. And when I talk about resources, I'm talking about books. You know, I've written a lot of books and things like this. Here is a USB of 
how to float on the sea of destruction in the last days. We produce that right here, or the audio series of the same series. A lot of people want it in video. I really like the video because we show a lot of interesting things on the programs. But in addition to this, we also do the study guides. And you know I love my study guides because I put a lot of work into these study guides. It's nearly like writing an entire book for every series that we do. And boy, this is a good one. If you don't have this series, you need to order it. But the reason I'm telling you this is because all of this is produced right here in this room in our Tulsa facility. You know, several years ago, when we started our ministry expansion project, it was quite large. But we have already reduced half of that debt. That is amazing and we've been able to do it because of you. And I wanna say thank you for everything you've given us to help us reduce this debt. It's really not for us. It's so we can liberate this debt and then begin to use all of our resources to take this teaching and these materials to the ends of the earth. And that includes a lot of materials that we give. We sow a lot of our material because there are many people who cannot afford to pay and we want them to have the teaching of the Word of God that they can trust. And if you're not a part of our giving team already, please pray about being a part of our giving team to reduce the debt in the ministry expansion project so we can move on and take the light of the gospel further to the ends of the earth. God wants to use you to heal the sick. And maybe you need to be healed. Well, my friends, Jesus paid the price for you to be healed. And if you'll call us or send us an email, we'll pray with you for the anointing of God to touch you right where you are. And don't forget that the healing power of God can operate through your hands to set other people free. And that's why I want you to order the brand new series called How to Heal the Sick. Do you want to see the sick healed? Then you need to hear this series, which comes with a great study guide. And if you want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus paid for sickness and disease, then you need to order the book called Bodily Healing and the Atonement. And if you want to learn how easy it is to be healed or see others healed, then you need to order Bob Indian's book, which is called The Grace of Healing, Re Revealing God's Heart to Heal. These books are just magnificent. But you can order all these things by going online, or by calling us right now. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you really are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Jesus, just like you healed, you're still in the healing business. And I speak and release the anointing of God to come to my friend right now to heal and to set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, tomorrow when we come back, we're going to really dive into the methods that Jesus used to heal the sick. But until then... Remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends so more people can see it.